But even this idea of a partial implementation raises challenges and questions. A compensation payment is very clearly, even with the relocation, is very clearly not the same as a long-term plan. Even if the scope of the analysis is restricted to, let's say, even 100,000 of the camp dwelling refugees in Lebanon, the range of challenges and issues are, are immediately evident. As a starting point, I would suggest that the following require serious consideration. Firstly, would the economy of a future Palestinian state be able to offer this community more opportunities than the menial jobs which trap them in poverty in Lebanon? Secondly, would a West Bank community, with their own experiences of a 40 year long military occupation, be willing to accept the en masse establishment of communities of returning, heavily compensated refugees with which they have had very little, if any, contact with in the last 60 years? Finally, after 60 years, Many of the refugees I spoke to were incredibly adamant that they would want any future relocation plan to maintain the social and familial networks of the camps. So this then raises the question, could, it, could or would Israel live with communities of returnees born and bred in the culture of Lebanese politics in close proximity to their borders? Of most significant, probably intellectual and ethical challenge, is the question that would a broadly, it must be said, broadly unpopular idea of a Palestinian return to the West Bank satisfy the rights and desires of a community race for 60 years on the legitimacy of the right of return? If the answer to this particular question is no, then any idea of a return raises significant questions for Israel and probably more importantly for the Palestinian political structures. Israel would, I think, quite reasonably insist that any peace deal which brokered a partial return of the implementation of 194 would be the end of all claims. So the idea that Israel would say that this is the end of the line as far as this issue goes. History has shown, however, what the Palestinian Authority can agree to and what it can implement and not always the same thing. To me, this goes to the absolute heart of this entire issue, the need to ensure the agency of the refugee community in the peace process. But without the active consent of the community that attempts to assist, a peace deal is simply not going to hold. I think this point needs to be made really forcefully in an environment where any idea of a return of a community to a land that has been physically and politically separated from for 60 years is seriously being floated. Finally, we look at the idea of resettlement, and I'm looking at this in a purely Lebanese context. As I kind of indicated before, for those Palestinians who are somewhat integrated into Lebanese society, while the political determination to have their historical rights recognised remains quite intense, the willingness to move to a completely unclear future in the West Bank is, is not so absolute. Many people said to me, why on earth would we want to become refugees again? For those who are integrated into Lebanon, despite the political compromise it signifies, it could be argued that resettlement with compensation may well be a pathway towards resolution. I would also argue that behind the bluster of Lebanese politics, the notion of enhanced economic and political rights, with the exception of voting rights, um, is, is often broadly accepted. But again, this depends on which group of the Palestinian refugee you are, you are talking about. The views, the Lebanese views towards the camp communities are very rarely that flexible. 